U.S. is widely recognized as an example of working democracy. The democratic principles were rooted in the Constitution from the very beginning. Democracy is about giving power to people. Sounds great, indeed. But have you ever thought about how much control do you really have on the policy of those governors? Have you ever thought whose interests they really represent? To understand who your government really served, just take a look who benefits the most over time. Theodore Roosevelt warned, of all forms of tyranny, the least attractive and most vulgar is the tyranny of mere wealth, the tyranny of a plutocracy. America has long prided itself on being a fair society, where everyone has an equal chance of getting ahead. But the statistics suggest otherwise. The chances of a poor citizen, or even a middle-class citizen, making it to the top in America are smaller than in many countries of Europe. There has been a relative transfer of wealth and political power from the vast majority of America's population to a privileged super minority. The results of all those processes is that Americans elect leaders who will take care of the 1%, not the 99%. The upper 1% of Americans are now taking in nearly a quarter of the nation's income every year. In terms of wealth rather than income, the top 1% control 40%. At the same time, the bottom 80% of people own only 10% of the nation's wealth. Virtually all U.S. senators and most of the representatives in the House are members of the top 1% when they arrive, are kept in office by money from the top 1%, and know that if they serve the top 1% well, they will be rewarded by the top 1% when they leave office. The key executive branch policymakers on trade and economic policy also come from the top 1%. It is also important to realize that the lower half of that top 1% has far less than those in the top half. In fact, both wealth and income are super concentrated in the top 0.1%, which is just one in a thousand. One of the best measures economists use to determine Americans' economic advancement is whether wages are rising broadly and consistently. The U.S. economy has experienced long-term real wage stagnation and a persistent lack of economic progress for many workers. Today's real average wage of typical worker has about the same purchasing power it did 40 years ago. Let's take a look at a growth of richest 1%. How about the CEO income growth compensation growth in comparison with the typical worker? Average CEO is now making 400 times more than a typical worker. Well, now it should be perfectly clear for everyone who benefits the most from the current system. The wealth of rich people constantly grows on expense of the typical worker. No matter which party or governor you elect, they will thrive. The election is just an illusion of control. Wealthy, powerful elite controls government and makes policy to benefit its members. Corporate tax accounts for only 8% the federal income, while in 1950, the corporate tax accounted for about 30% of total revenues. The share of corporate tax in the GDP has also declined drastically. By the way, in 2021, Corporate income tax expenditures exceeded the size of corporate income tax revenue. It means that corporations overall pay less into budget than receive back. Do you still think the system works for the benefits of majority? I bet you didn't know that the 400 richest families pay a lower tax rate than the average taxpayer. Of course, we are all equal, but some people more equal than others. The number of U.S. billionaires grew more than nine times between 1990 and March 2020, leaping from 66 to 614. The total wealth of U.S. billionaires grew from $240 billion in 1990 to $4.18 trillion in March 2021. Pandemic was a very hard time for the majority of Americans, but not for ultra-rich. The total wealth of U.S. billionaires grew by $1.3 trillion during the roughly first 11 months of the coronavirus pandemic, a 44% spike in wealth. Keep in mind that during this time the economy suffered, 76 million people lost their jobs, 28 million fell ill with the virus, and more than 500,000 died from COVID-19. In April 2021, U.S. billionaires had nearly twice as much combined wealth than the bottom half of Americans. In 2023, America still leads the world, with 735 billionaires worth a collective $4.7 trillion. Now we can clearly see that the USA is plutocracy, a society that is ruled or controlled by people of great wealth. Given the power of the top 1%, this is the way you would expect the system to work. Why should they care about your needs at all? You are the servant, not otherwise. The situation worldwide is no different. The income gap is growing. More and more wealth is concentrated in hands of small percentage of people. The share of global wealth held by the wealthiest 1% increased again to nearly 46% in 2021, according to Credit Suisse's annual Global Wealth Report. 
The rules of economic globalization are likewise designed to benefit the rich. They encourage competition among countries for business, which drives down taxes on corporations, weakens health and environmental protections, and undermines what used to be viewed as the core labor rights. A report released in September 2022 by the European Network on Debt and Development, a civil society agency, found that 143 countries are now instituting policies that cut back on education, health care, social protection, and other public services. Imagine what the world might look like if the rules were designed instead to encourage competition among countries for workers. Governments would compete in providing economic security, low taxes on ordinary wage earners, good education, things workers care about, but the top 1% don't need to care. Economists say that the complexity of the U.S. tax code, comprising both rules and numerous exceptions to rules, is part of what makes the nominal corporate tax rate so different from the actual tax rate. We have many highly skilled people spending their time finding ways to play tax tricks rather than doing something that is economically productive. Tax code is full of variety of tax breaks for businesses estimated to cost the Treasury more than $100 billion annually. U.S. effective corporate tax rates, which account for deductions and other write-offs and give a more accurate picture of how much companies owe in tax, have been on the decline. It is not unusual for large corporations to pay no income taxes despite making billions of dollars in profits. In fact, one study of corporate securities filings found 55 of America's largest companies paid no income taxes in 2020 despite generating hefty profits while netting $3.5 billion in aggregate tax rebates. Nearly half of those companies paid no U.S. income taxes for three successive years. Among those not paying income taxes for at least three years were profitable blue chips. During the housing mortgage crisis in 2008, foreclosures soar 81%. According to the New York Times, U.S. employers shed 2.6 million jobs in 2008, the worst year since 1945. Not one major Wall Street executive, though, went to jail for destroying U.S. economy in 2008 as a result of their greed. Instead, the CEOs of many of the firms directly involved in the global financial crisis of 2007 to 2008 profited handsomely. For example, Stanley O'Neill received $1,615 million cash register sound after leaving Merrill Lynch in 2007 seven amid billions of losses due to the mortgage crisis. Charles Prince III, who resigned as CEO of Citigroup in late 2007 and received $68 million in cash and stock options. Total federal lobbying skyrocketed to $4.1 billion in 2022, a new open secrets analysis of federal lobbying disclosures found. That's a nominal record and the highest lobbying spending since 2010 when adjusted for inflation. Major industries and leading corporations seek to influence legislation and regulation. These firms spend money to shape the policy of the government with only one goal in mind, to increase profits. How much did you spend on lobbying last year? Don't expect the government to fulfill your needs. Those who pay will always determine the policy. Big healthcare insurers soared under the Obama administration. It has been revealed that the White House was aware as early as June 2010 that an estimated 40 to 67 percent of the 14 million Americans who purchase health insurance on the individual market would be dropped by their insurers. Yet, President Obama repeatedly assured Americans if you like your health plan, you can keep it. Obamacare more than doubled health insurance costs for workers and families, with the national average premium increasing by 129% from 2013 to 2019, yet another proof that the system is only designed to benefit the rich.